we'll just take questions from our media members. And appreciate you taking some time today. And what's your off season been like? What have you been focusing on, wrapping up, uh, trying to get ready for spring training? Um, well, after the fall league, I took about a week or two off just to try to get the body right. And then, um, you know, ever since then, I've been just trying to gain weight, you know, in the weight room heavy. I'd like to show up a little bit heavier than I did last year. Probably like 180, 185 would be nice. Um, but yeah, I mean, just trying to get better as far as physically. I think um, hitting wise, obviously working every day, but the biggest thing for me, I think, is gaining weight right now. What was that fall week like for you? How was the adjustment and everything like that? Uh, it was fantastic. I mean, the, the competition out there, the people I got to meet, I mean, kind of seeing how other orgs do things and, you know, putting stuff together. I mean, it's the different coaches out there. It was, it was a really good time. I mean, a lot of baseball for sure. New for me, um, you know, coming from high school, this was my first full season, and then, you know, extra 30 on top of that, it was a lot of baseball, but, you know, I got to get used to it for the future, and I was really excited. It was a lot of fun. Becky, what's your winter communication with the off season like? Like, what, what does that transition seem to be like for the Mad Dogs this off season, kind of what they bring in their role? Yeah, I think it's going to be great. Um, Dust Tyler worked a lot with Dusty last year, and I think that communication has been off season so far. Um, I think it's going to be an awesome possible change. Um, I love Mad Dog. I love Dusty. I love Gertie. I love all of them. They, I think the three of them together are awesome. Um, I was very fortunate to work with all three of them and everything. And uh, I'm excited for this year. I'm excited to see what Dusty can bring because I know he's got a lot of knowledge and a lot of stuff to tap into. I hear there's something that you did this season particularly. Like, say you're working with like Chase or Keith. Yeah, just, just more of, of how to use my stuff, my arsenal. Um, What's going to get guys out? What to do if it's a certain hit? If it's like right handed versus left handed, what I did well, what I didn't do well, what I need to work on, you know, the, the normal stuff. A um, little bit of, of working on a slide, different, a little bit of a different slider and stuff, but nothing too crazy. No, no massive change. I think the last thing you uh, spoke about this earlier and talked about basically kind of really starting and kind of knowing each other since you were in high school. Oh, yeah. Uh, what, I mean, when you look at kind of two or three and kind of where you guys were at then, um, especially with Tink, it's different because I've known him a little bit longer. Um, I mean, when I met him, it was before we got drafted. I want to say I was two inches taller than him and probably uh -huh. had 20 pounds on him. And, you know, we got drafted. And then I saw him six months later, and he's 6'1", had me by 20 pounds. Um, he's been he's been unreal. I mean, every, every since I've seen him, I knew he was a player. I mean, we played together. He was up to 96 as, like, a 16-year-old. Um, so seeing him progress and, you know, start to become chill out a little bit and be more consistent with his stuff has been amazing. And as far as Jordan, I mean, I didn't know him too well before we got drafted, but going to the outside and getting to meet him in person and, you know, watching him play every day, I mean, I'm not going to say he came in a little boy because he's 6'5", 230, <laughs> but, I mean, right now, I mean, he's, he's a man amongst boys. It's what it, what it feels like out there. You mentioned on spring training this year, you were both in the what are your goals for spring training to impress the older staff? Um, I mean, I'm not going to try to do too much. I think I'm, I'm just going to go out there and try to do what I can. I mean, um, I'm not uh, I'm not necessarily trying to take a spot or anything. I'm just trying to go out there and be myself. You know, I'm trying to improve. Um, I think it is a good opportunity, like you said, for me to get in front of those guys. But um, no, I'm not thinking about it too much. I mean, it's still baseball at the end of the day. Um, I would say a confidence thing. I mean, last year was my first first year ever really focusing on shortstop and, and dropping, putting pitching behind me. Um, and I think that that really benefited. And I'm I'm excited to see what this offseason does for me in transitioning into my second my second full committed year to shortstop. Um, yeah, I mean, excited to do it. Mentioned in the fall league, I mean, with the second layoff for the Rockies, are you being benefited from that? On the other side of the bat? Oh, I mean, it was for sure a lot easier. I uh, I played a lot of second base in high school. Um, so, I mean, out there, I was really just mainly focused on hitting. I mean, second base, you can block it and throw it to first base. So, um, no, nah, it was fun. It was really, really relaxed out there. Just out there, I mean, playing second base was pretty much an extra three days straight for me. That's what it felt like. So, no, nah, I, I liked it. I enjoyed it a lot. You mentioned the game weight. Does that have potentially an impact on your muscle? Um, no, I mean, I would. I think if I gain weight, I'll probably get a little bit more tough. I think I could get a little bit more 
few more home runs would be nice. Um, I'm trying not to, you know, I don't want to overdo it. I'd like to keep my speed. And a lot, I'd like to be that guy. I'd like to be the guy that gets on base with a Jordan Walker and a Goldsmith to hit me in. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's a big part, but I think the biggest thing for me is probably just to reaffect my hitting and power potential. Okay, Frank Francis, the Blue Jays, just even if you weren't playing for <laughs> but I, when you have so many guys like that throughout the whole roster, do you see that in him any way that you Oh, 100 percent. I mean, you know, that's always something we think about, but that's at the same time we can't really control it. So, I mean, me going out there and I could play the best of my abilities, and you know, I could still be where where I was yesterday. So, it's not really much we can do. Um, but no, I mean, yeah, it, it is exciting for sure. I mean, I'd like to go out there and show them what I can do and make a better person. Yeah. Jordan's roommate, friend, you know, played side by side for years before he met Luke Alba. What do you think his mindset is? I'm sure you've talked to him about, you know, he, he has no problem doing anything he makes it up this year. What's his mindset right now going into spring training? Oh, he's hungry. I mean, he really is. It's, we talk about it a lot and joke about it a lot. Spring training, he's, he's probably the worst player we have in the <laughs> org during spring training. And then game one starts and he's the best player we have in the org. So, I mean, no, he's. I think he's ready. He's hungry. He's been working for it. Um, been talking about it a lot. So, no, I'm excited for him. Uh, in sync with me earlier, I asked if you had to get either you or Jordan out to win the game. You said he wanted to face Jordan. You know, you get out. What? Why is that? Like, why? Um, why does he want to face Jordan instead of you? I think because he got him out once. I mean, me personally, <laughs> I would want to face him myself, of course. But no, nah, I mean that's that's my guy. Um, I think I think Tink could really really do it to us both. I mean, I think he's really that good. But no, nah, I mean, yeah, confidence wise. I'd, I'd probably be pretty confident to pitch to myself over Jordan. Yeah. Patrick, you've been spending a lot of time in the future, Patrick Griffin. Yeah, yeah. Patrick yeah. Griffin. How, how, how often do you go to the complex or the game like the Griff formation and just have the outfield with you? No, I'm with I'm with kids a good amount because we train at the same place and I've been throwing bench to him and stuff. Um, and then I've been seeing Miles and Zach over there too. Um, I go over there a couple times a week probably right now and probably in the next week or so I'll probably end up going over there four or five times a week and hanging out with the guys and hanging out with some of the training staff that's over there now. But uh, yeah, I've been over there a decent amount. You and Tink are actually sparring back and forth. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're pressing and then we go pads over there at uh, the complex. Have you overlapped with, uh, with Wilson now there? I know he's been in and out a little bit. Yeah, he's been in and out. No, I missed him a couple of times by like 30 minutes. Every time I go in, he's like this serious and stuff. So I haven't met him yet or ever in the talk so much. Looking forward to that, though. How much competition is there on the pitching staff? Oh my gosh, look at it. Up and down. I mean, it's incredible. I think we have six guys that all have over 60 big league starts. Like, that, that's incredible in itself to have that much depth. And, and these guys, like like you were saying, everyone's hungry, man. Everyone wants to win. Everyone wants to compete. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Okay, I know uh, last week going to Tank and training camp and stuff after the lockout. And how different the locker room is now that you've been there for a few weeks? Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I mean, just continue to, to work out and grow and do my normal off-season shenanigans and hang out and stuff. But um, I'm really looking forward to being with the Cardinals for a full off-season this year and not just kind of hopping in two weeks into spring training, especially with the shortened spring training last year and just looking around the locker room like, crap, I don't, I don't know anyone. But, you know, this year it'll be a lot, a lot different, a little different camaraderie and stuff and adding some pieces to the puzzle. So it'll, it'll be a lot of fun. Facing your arm is... The, the showstopper, the headliners, what everyone talks about. But your work is short defensively, going side to side, feeling balls, and it's really grown. Can you talk a little bit about the work you've put in and the work you've done to do a better defensive shortstop and arm aside? Um, I would, I would for sure. I'd like to give all the credit to Jose Okendo, our our defensive guy. We call him Cheo. He is, um, I mean, he's a wizard, man. He's he's really Yoda. I mean. Second highest fielding percentage of all time. I mean, that's that's like Barry Bonds trying to tell you how to hit. You know, you go listen. But um, I'd I'd for sure have to give him all the credit. I think what we did last off season. I went to uh, went to Florida early and worked with him for about two months straight, just taking normal routines, now balls, never work on the the crazy plays. You know, just trying to be as consistent as I can. And yeah, I, I think I think he's been the biggest impact on the defensive side of the game for me. How important is having a guy like Kendo? organization, channel as wealth and knowledge with everybody. Oh, it's amazing. I mean, I think 
whenever he talks, everyone listens. I mean, it doesn't matter top to bottom. I mean, the day the day I met him was was the day I fell in love with his coaching and, and how he did things. Um, I mean, you got guys from from Yadier Molina who played since one year, Albert Pujols has been playing forever. I mean, those guys listen to Cheo like the same way I do. So, I mean, if you see legends like that listening to him and, and really trying to soak everything up, I mean, I'm a sponge around that guy, around that guy. I mean, everything he has to say is I'm, I'm trying to take it in. Oh, of course. Oh, of course. But no, no other better way. I mean, he's he's hard on me every time we, we feel. But I mean, I know it's just making me better every time. You know, I never take it to heart. You know, ever. Nothing personal. You see, just 11, I think it was 11 players made their debut last season for Cardinals. Does that give you a, a spark that, hey, I can make this jump too? You know, the, the organization pushes guys to make A hundred percent. I mean, it's especially seeing the guys that were in the fall league last year that made it up this year. I mean, it's something exciting to think about. Um, you know, I'd, I'd like to just make sure I'm ready whenever I get there, so I'm, I'm trying to focus on that right now. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it.